Welcome back. In this part, we're going to talk about registers. And let's start the story from the beginning. Central Processing Unit, or the processor for short, performs several operations, mostly involve processing data. So the processor takes input, processes this input, and gives us output. This data can be stored in memory and accessed from the memory. This is what we call the fetch decode execute cycle, where the basic operation of a computer is called the fetch execute cycle. And the central processing unit has different components, as you can see. We have the control unit, we have the arithmetic logic unit, we have registers, and we have the main memory. So the control unit fetches the instructions from the main memory, then it decodes it, passes it to the arithmetic logic unit through the registers, then the arithmetic logic unit or the ALU executes the code and so on. However, reading data from and storing data into memory slows down the processor as it involves complicated processes of sending the data request across the control bus and into the memory storage unit and getting the data through the same channel. To speed up the process operations, the process includes some internal memory storage locations called registers. So the registers store data elements for processing without having to access the memory. A limited number of registers are built into the processor chip. A register is basically a small piece of RAM built into the CPU itself. So let's talk a little bit more about registers. So x86 processors have eight 32-bit general registers. And these registers are grouped into three categories. General registers, control registers, and segment registers. And the general registers are further divided into three groups. Data registers, index registers, and pointer registers. So the data registers has four 32-bit which are used for arithmetic, logical and other operations. And these 32-bit registers can be used in three different ways. First of all, as a complete 32-bit data registers, which are basically EAX, EBX, ECX, and EDX. They can also be used using the lower halves of the 32-bit registers as for 16-bit data registers used by AX, BX, CX, and DX. So you can see 32 is divided into 16 bits, and then we'll see that the 16 bits is divided into two subcategories with eight bits of each. And this is the third way actually, so lower and higher halves of the four 16-bit registers can be used as eight-bit data registers. And these registers, EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX, ESI, and EDI, they're called general purpose registers. So this is what all data registers are all about. So some of these data registers have specific use in arithmetical operations. AX, for example, is the primary accumulator. It's used in input-output. So for example, in multiplication operation, one operand is stored in EAX, AX, or AL registers, according to the size of the operand, of course. Um, you have BX, for instance, which is known as the base register. And this is used in indexed addressing. Also, we have the CX, which is the count register. As the ECX and the CX registers store the loop count in any iterative operations. And finally, DX, which is known as the data register. It's also used in input-output operations. The next type of registers is the index registers. This 32-bit index registers, ESI and EDI, and their 16-bit portions, SI and DI, are used for indexed addressing and sometimes used in addition and subtraction. So there are two sets of index pointers, the SI and the DI. SI stands for source index and DI stands for destination index. So the source index is used as source index for string operations and the destination index is also used for string operations. So you can move value or add values which can both be sources but they should be only one destination. And this is not so clear here. So let's say for example that EAX is one source, EBX is a second source so you can move EAX to EBX or you can add EAX plus EBX and then store it in EBX 
okay? And I don't want to get too much deep in this because there are two ways of doing that using AT&T or Intel. One uses the second source and the other uses the first source, but let's not go there in this video. And the last type of general registers is called pointer registers. And the pointer registers are 32 bits ESP and EBP registers. These are categories of pointer registers, okay? So uh, we have the stack pointer. So ESP stands for extended stack pointer. And this stack pointer refers to the current position of data or address within the program stack. And you can think of the stack as big cylinder where you have a lot of instructions and it's using and it uses something called FIFO or first in first out. Basically, it's an accounting concept, but it's valid here also. So the first instruction that comes is the first one to be served. OK, so this is the stack of instructions or operations. Um, the second type of pointer is called base pointer or extended base pointer. And this mainly helps in referencing the parameter variables passed to a subroutine. And the base pointer can also be combined with SI and DI as base register for special addressing. So let's type a program to understand the use of registers in assembly programming. And this program will display 10 hashes or 10 pound keys on the screen. So as we did the last time, we start by section.text. Then we use the keyword global underscore start. And this must be declared for the linker for the LD command underscore start. This tells the linker where is the entry point for the kernel to execute the program. So we want to move and move here means copy. And this is not entirely moving one value from one place to the other or cut it totally. But moving in computer science means copying, which means that you will leave a copy behind. OK. So you want to move to edx register the length of that message. Okay, so this is the length of the message. So you remember when we said that the edx is known as the data register, which is used in input output operations. So there it is, we are using it in our program. We want also to move the message itself to ecx register. And here is the message and we're going to define the message later. So this is the message that we'll write later. We also want to move to EBX or the base register. We want to move number one. And this is a file descriptor. We're going to talk about file descriptors later. And we want to move number four to the primary accumulator. So EAX, we want to move number four. And this is a system call to write message. And we have seen that before when we have written the Hello World program, 0x80. And this is to call the kernel. So all what we did here is that we have specified the length of that message that I want to type and the message itself. So we want, for example, 10 pound keys or 10 stars. So the length will be 10. And the message itself, I'm going to give that message a name or a variable name. OK, so we'll do the same thing. So we'll move values to the same register. So we will move to EDX um, length here will be 10. And I want also to move to ECX. Let's give it the name of star. OK, and then I will repeat the same lines here. So move EBX one. I want to move EAX 4, 0x80, and this is to call the kernel. And then we will move 1 to EAX, which is the primary accumulator, to tell the system that we want to exit. So this is to exit the system. And again, we will call the kernel. So int 0x80. This was the text section. Now we need the data section. So we'll say section dot data and I want the message to declare bytes or define bytes. And I will say displaying 10 stars. OK, and we want a new line. So 0x8 and I want to define the length to be equal 
to and using this dollar sign dash message, okay, which will be the length of the message. And finally, I want to multiply the star by 10. Okay, so this star here, this variable, I want to multiply it by 10. Okay, so we'll say star times 10, define bytes, and we'll type asterisk. This is the whole program. All of that in order to just type the message displaying 10 stars and displaying 10 asterisks. So let's save the file. Let's exit. All right, so now let's go ahead and assemble our files. So we'll say NASM F elf 64 and really doesn't matter if you're working on 32-bit or 64-bit machine doesn't really matter this will work just fine and we want an output file we will call it register.o and the input is register.asm okay now we want to use the linker so ld and we'll take our object file register.o and i want the output to be equal to register Okay, so now if you will take a look, you'll find that we have a register file which is highlighted in green and this is an executable file. And let's go ahead and run it. Displaying 10 pound keys. Oh, this should be 10 stars. Okay, so I think um, because there was an error and I had to repeat that. So let's actually go and fix this. Let's go here below and say displaying 10 stars okay and let's save the file let's exit and we will run the same steps again because if we will just run the file nothing happens because this is already executable so we will need to go through the assembly cycle from the top so we'll say nasm okay on the same file we will overwrite it so uh, we want the linker and there you go, displaying 10 stars. All right, so thank you very much guys for watching. In the next part, we're going to talk about system calls.